Yes, that's true. Good morning to you and happy Sunday. I trust the weekend has been fine. Glory be to Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on how to make great gain. Yes, and this is coming from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. You are warmly welcome to the Really, Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adenekon. It's on package to inform and inspire you into a real knowledge of God, a richer knowledge of God, and everything is being powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Exuspiration, the place. This is Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've grown used to the acts of God and now you want to learn His ways, this is home for you. We are praying now. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your great name, O oh God. Every opportunity we have to enter into your house is a welcome one. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we do, you have these few minutes together with your people today. We ask, O oh God, that you bless the moments together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Lord. Amen. Okay, verse 9. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay, let's go back to it because now it starts with bots. Let's just go back to it. It says that having food and clothing, with all this we shall be content. But those who desire to exactly, so that's it. So you remember that we spoke about godliness with contentment and I think we should actually overlap so that we can do a good job of this thing. Let's go back into the into the issue of godliness. When we say godliness, what do we what do we mean? You see in our part of the world um, people say things like somebody close to God, somebody who knows God and all that and we just say it um, bearing at the back of our, or having at the back of our mind uh, that the person is religious, you know. The Bible describes somebody like Cornelius. It said this Cornelius was a man that was uh, devout. Devout just just means pious, so somebody who is um, who does a lot of religious stuff. He doesn't miss church. The Bible says he was devout. He, he never missed church, and uh, he says his whole household was fantastic. He said uh, uh, the man also gave alms always and all that. People now think all that is godliness, okay? But God. Who knew that that is not what godliness is about and saw that in spite of this thing because of that misunderstanding of Cornelius and which many people have even today this Cornelius was going to go to hell so God had to take a step okay so that this very good man will not end up at the wrong place a lot of people uh, do not understand godliness and that's why it's important for us to explain what godliness is all about now godliness begin with being somebody who is in god who is in christ bible says that we are um saved we are dead or something like that and it says our life is hid with christ in god okay and that's the kind of person who can talk about godliness somebody whose life is hid in christ and christ in god then you can begin to talk about godliness when you are not in god you can't talk about god you can talk about being religious you can talk about you know all those beautiful things you can talk about those things but you see in the face of the standards of god you don't have a chance at all your case is like a candle that lights up a dark place but in the face of the floodlights of the stadium it becomes a, a stain altogether irrecognizable that's what it is like when you know people uh, so-called uh, close to god you know are godly and all that but godliness as far as the, as the bible is concerned begins with being in god being in christ in god that is the beginning of it and what is he talking about godliness is talking about being like god doing your things like god if you are <laughs> using the fact that you attend church to define your godliness satan also attends church so that has nothing to do with godliness at all oh because you you give arms um you are using that to define godliness did you know the bible says that if i give so much arms and I, so much that i give my body to be burned and have not love 
He says, I'm an, like an empty symbol, you know, just clanging symbol. All those things, that, but there's no way you can be in God or you can operate in love without being in God. That's it. So, um, godliness begins with being in God, operating in love, being in Christ. That is the beginning of godliness. Any other form of thing is something Satan does as well. God help us in Jesus' mighty name. So, you see, that's where it begins. Now, it goes on to say, with contentment, when godliness is combined with contentment in a certain person, it says it is a great gain. In other words, when people say they are godly, but they don't understand the godliness enough to make them have contentment, it is something and they will enter heaven. But you see, when you understand the godliness thing very, very well, you will be content. It is those who do not understand it, who do not, who are not contented and they rob themselves of what the Bible refers to as great gain here. But when you understand godliness, that I've, I've tried my best to describe this morning, even though it's not been the, the, the best or the most comprehensive thing because of my time, nevertheless, when you get a good grasp of it, contentment will follow. But when you do not understand it very, very well, and then you lack contentment, you are going to miss out on what the Bible calls this great gain. It is a great gain to be godly and to be content with it. It is, no, it is not a great gain when you are godly, but you don't have that contentment because you do your, your understanding of godliness is faulty or is incomplete. Then the great gain of a thing cannot apply to you. It's, it just cannot apply to you. Um, sorry, we shall win in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, then. He went on to say that, for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out honestly because when you have that godliness of a thing it, it grants unto you revelation and understanding when you have revelation and understanding your attitude to the things of this world will be like the attitude of god because godliness is not about going to church it's not about being pious it's not about being devout it's not about uh, you're raising the kids well it's not about um, um giving uh offerings and alms and things like that no it's about doing your things like god doing your things in a in a way that god does things you know um god godly a word and 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 uh, um an adverb as it were okay so when you are doing your things in a way that is like god you are doing it god likely okay if you like and then you are doing it in uh um, godly manner. Um, take for example, you are doing something quickly. You are doing, you know, in, in, everybody understands it has to do with, with quickness. Okay? So, you, when we say godly, it means that you are doing your things in the way of God. That's what it means. That you are living your life in the way of God. You are doing it after the order of God, or after the genre of God and all that. I, I, I can't describe it a, a bit better than that. I'm so sorry I don't have enough time. Now, because of all of that, your eyes are open to certain things. And one of the things to which your eyes are open is, is what follows here. That we brought nothing into this world and it's certain we're going to carry nothing out. That is one. There are so many other things that your eyes are going to be open to. Your eyes are going to be open to the fact that after you have gone, all the things you claim that you have left for your children, you are not sure what will happen to those things. In spite of having uh, writing the so-called way, you don't know what will happen to them. That's the truth. Another thing that your eyes are going to open to. Let's go on. It says that, therefore, having food and raiment, let us with these things we shall be content. In other words, look, that certain once you have the basic things, that's fine. All those other things are bonuses. All those other things are surpluses. They are additions and things like that. You have the basic things along with your godliness. You are fine. You are happy. And when that happens, when you have that. It is a big thing. It is a great gain. That great gain means that not a lot of people have it. It is a big thing. We, you know, <laughs> gain is different from great gain. So when it says great gain, it means that not many people, including the children of God, are going to have this kind of a thing. And I pray that somebody will be inspired this morning from all the things I'm saying. He said, because those who desire to be rich, they fall into temptation and a snare and to many foolish and harmful you know, uh, loss. 
again, is because of an understanding of godliness. That is why he could talk about verse 9. That when people have a strong drive to be rich, a lot of lusts and temptations come up, which can uh, put the person in the kind of trouble he never expected in the first instance. And then he may land himself. He says, listen, he says, they that would desire to be rich simply means who have a, a, a drive like they have in this world to be rich and it brings them temptation a snare into foolish harmful loss that drown men in destruction and perdition perdition means loss i mean the person gets lost okay now this foolish harmful loss they constitute a temptation a snare is a trap they constitute a temptation a trap and many people fall into that and get destroyed or get lost lost here i'm talking about I'm, I'm sure talking about soul or talking about direction talking about purpose that's a way you can be alive but you have lost direction you have lost purpose to all intent and purposes you are off you're off track completely those kind of a thing can happen for the people that have this strong desire to be to be rich it says the reason again and the reason is this for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil or all evil it didn't say money is the root of evil it says the love of it is the root of evil when you have that strong drive when you have that thing that um, is something you pour your love upon okay your attention your affection and you get addicted to it it will lead you to all kinds of evil and we don't need to you know spend too much emphasizing on, on these things it says from which some have strayed uh in the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows because of this thing it makes from people to stray it makes them to go off tangent it makes them to derail okay and it makes them to pierce themselves with many many sorrows but i'm not going to emphasize on this thing but if, because if you are able to get that understanding of what godliness is all about and you you have contentment on because you have an understanding of godliness contentment will follow and that contentment with godliness is great gain it's not just gain it's great gain let's change that great to rare it's rare gain honestly in other words the majority of the children of god would not have this thing but some people are going to catch it and they are going to get it and they are going to be so content so happy so pleased with themselves in the presence of god it is great gain and that's what i pray for you this uh, very very sunday morning i could spend a lot of time talking about the love of money talking about the temptation and the snare and into foolish and hurtful laws that drown men in destruction and perdition i talk about how because of greed some people have pierced themselves with many sorrows all those things are in the bible but i can see that if you can get that godliness you are, you avoid all these things have you noticed that the way paul wrote all his epistles he will first of all begin with the principles and then towards the end of each episode he will now begin to give them practical uh, information okay that's the same thing that is happening here the, the the principle is that of godliness okay once you get that one all these other ones they will never be your portion but for those who do not understand who do not get this godliness thing then we we'll we we'll need to emphasize this other thing so that they, when they read these ones peradventure it may scare them or warn them into being careful the way they will go about things it's been very very fine this morning thank you for your patience thank you for sharing time with us it's a sunday and i know you got to go to church and i also want to encourage you to be there and make the best of church this morning i trust god to meet your need in the name of Jesus Christ, to throw light upon your ways, to solve some question, to resolve some issue on your mind in the name of Jesus Christ, and also to fellowship with the brethren by the grace of God. Thank you very much for being there. Have a fine Sunday. Have a fantastic week ahead of you.